Welcome back to D20 Tactics. On this channel, I play Dungeons and Dragons with my friends, and we explore combat scenarios and play out the tactics used to defeat monsters quickly and safely, giving you more time to get back to roleplaying. I'm your host and Dungeon Master, Sarson Zero, and today I'm joined by Kron, Fear No Equal, Blind Oracle, and Azure Wolf. Together, we'll run through typical battles that adventurers might see playing Dungeons and Dragons. Whether you're a new player trying to gain experience and level up your game, a seasoned fighter looking to learn some new tricks and maintain your edge, or a dungeon master who wants to get the most challenge out of your monsters, join us as we slice and dice our way through Monsters and Mayhem and evaluate the tactics that decide who makes it onto the boss fight and who's going to be reaching for a fresh character sheet. In this series, the players are controlling characters straight out of the starter set. I'm Azure Wolf, and I'm playing the Wizard. I'm Blind Oracle, and I'm playing the Rogue. I'm Fear No Equal, and I'm playing the Human Fighter. I'm Kron, and I'm playing the Dwarven Cleric. At level 15, our daring adventurers are storing the castle of a vampire count. They'll have to face six encounters, all based on this theme, before I get a long rest and level up to level 16. This is the 15th dungeon, the starter set series, so if you missed the start, you can find a link to it in the description below. Let's review what the players have at the start of the dungeon. So I'm playing a 15th level cleric with a Warhammer with plus 7 to hit, 1d8 plus 2 bludgeoning. Two channel divinities. Divine Word and Conjure Celestial are definitely interesting. 15th level fighter, and I've got AC 20 here. We've got a plus two great axe, that's our usual weapon, as well as a plus one pike if for some reason we need piercing over slashing. A javelin of lightning to give us a little extra range. Three attacks. We've got our second wind, our axe insurgent, two indomitables. We picked up a stone of good luck to improve our saves. Cloak of protection to improve my saves. Then we've got some potions of strength just in case we get drained and some elemental gems that crit on 18s, 19s, and 20s. At this point, we have a plus two short bow. Very exciting with plus one arrows to complement that. Evolved into having half a wizard attached by having use magic device available. So we have an instrument of the bards that grants me a short spell book. Standouts on that list include fly, protection from good and evil, and fairy fire. Scrolls of haste, scrolls of fly, a couple of miscellaneous potions to do various things. And we now have Blind Sense, which makes it even harder to sneak up on the rogue. Playing the wizard, we are now running with some Sunburst. That's our 8th level spell. Consumable scrolls, fireball, dispel, overchannel. Hopefully this gets used a little bit more in this round. And I think that's it. All the encounters use monsters straight out of the monster manual with no modifications or adjustments. Encounters are based on challenge ratings from that book. I'll control the monsters and do my best to put as many adventures into the ground as possible. As we go, we'll talk about the choices we made, why they fit the characters that players are using, and what mistakes we made along the way. Grab your dice. Draw your sword and let's jump into combat. And the adventurers have made their way into a spooky vampire castle. They're going to start at the bottom of the castle and work their way up to the levels, slaying vampires and other undead as they go. Anyone have any spells they want to precast? Precast simulacrum. Put the cloak of protection on the simulacrum. Water breathing. Mage armor on me and the simulacrum. It's a ritual to get my bird up. Heroes feast. Thousand GP. Do I have that? Yes. The answer is yes. yes. Is everybody going to split the cost of a Hero's Feast? Yes. Yes. Oh yeah. We love Hero's Feast. Hero's Feast is going to give the party immunity to poison and frightening, and all wisdom saving throws will be at advantage. It also increases their hit point maximum by 2d10. It's going to be 17, and they gain the same number of hit points. What level are you going to cast aid at? I think I will have to defer to the party here. Should I be upcasting here? I feel like we have upcast this in the past third level at this point or four whatever you feel like you need to cast aid at third level then so that'll be a total of plus 10 to everyone doesn't it only target three you got one target who doesn't get it i'll just not cast it on myself that'll be fun cracking the big 200 that's absurd hit points ability spells items in hand 118 hit points at a 118 a wand of magic pestle and a wand of lightning bolt four first level Three second, three third, three fourth, two fifth, one sixth. I have used up my seventh for my simulacrum and one eighth level spell. Arcane recovery is not used up. The fighter has 206 of 206 HP. We have a great axe plus two in hand. We have both of our indomitables as well as our action surge and second wind available to us. And we got our ring of boots on. I'm playing the cleric who has 155 out of 155 HP. Both of my channel divinities, four level one spells, three level two spells, two level three spells, three level four spells, two level five spells, one level seven spell, and one level eight spell. In hand, I have a war hammer and a plus two shield. The rogue currently has 150 out of 150 hit points. Holding my plus two short bow in hand using plus one arrows with the instrument of the bards slung over my back. 
monsters, abilities, items, and numbers. This encounter is the first encounter of the dungeon, so by tradition, it is the big scary monster encounter. This big scary monster is a mummy lord. Mummy lords have a couple of things going on. They have a 17 natural armor, fairly tough, double digit hit points, so actually not that tough. They're fairly slow with a speed of 20. They are vulnerable to fire, but they are immune to necrotic poison, bludgeoning, piercing, slashing from non-magical attacks, which is basically none of yours. They're immune to charm, exhaustion, frighten, poison, paralysis. They have a passive perception of 14. Rogue is going to be out of their range in all cases. They have magic resistance to spells and magical effects. They can spell cast. They can multi-attack. This mummy has legendary actions. They can attack throw blinding dust, throw blasphemous words, channel negative energy, or create a whirlwind of sand. So the legendary actions can be done after player turns. Any questions about the mummy? I assume that it's blatantly obvious that it's undead. Blatantly. The terrain is fairly straightforward. Tunnels, hallways, and passageways. You guys have snuck your way into the castle. Tactics. What do you guys think for tactics in this fight? Don't lose the semi-lycrum, because we probably don't need to lose it for this fight. And the mummy's going to want to take down the simulacrum, because he always wants to take down the simulacrum. I feel like we need to burn this pretty quick. The, the legendary actions are going to be obnoxious, and the fewer of those we have to get through, the better. Yeah, I'll probably just try to hit them with the biggest spell possible right out the gate. Probably burn action surge and see if I can just throw two turns worth of damage at them, too. Since this is an undead enemy and I don't know what we're going to be encountering for the rest of the dungeon, it seems like a good as time as any to throw out a quick channel divinity. This is a vampire castle, so you kind of know what you're going to be facing. So perhaps not, then. <laughs> also, we love those channel divinities for health recovery. So if that's what we got, let's go ahead and roll initiative. The most important roll. Anybody have higher than a 20? Anyone have between a 15 and a 20? I have a 15. It's upside down day. Who's got between a 15 and a 10? 11 on the fighter. Rogue has a 10. Anyone have between a 10 and a 5? 7 on the wizard. Five on the mummy. Owl is a three. Cleric, you're up first. Kick us off. All right, I'll start us off with a guiding bolt then. That's 21 total. 21 total. That'll hit. Total of 18 damage. After that is the mummy's legendary action. The mummy is going to use Whirlwind of Sand. This takes two of its actions. It magically transforms into a Whirlwind of Sand moving 60 feet and then reverting to normal form. Oh, we're having this fight in the doorway. We're having this fight in the hallway. Well, that's exciting. Bunker this, you filthy casual. <laughs> After that, we're going to go to the fighter. Yeah, we're going to move north of the Mummy Lord. Does it take difficult terrain to move through the owl space? No. Okay, let me get on the far side of the Mummy, then. Start swinging. Great axe attack. This has advantage. So that's a total of 25 to hit. 25 hits. 19 damage. And this is magical, yes. It is. Attack number two. 17 to hit. 17 hits. For 14 damage, attack number three. That's 24 to hit for 19 damage. Action Surge. 17 to hit again. 17 hits. 17 damage. That's an 18 to hit. 18 hits. 15 damage. And final attack. Nope. No? The mummy is dead. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> well, okay then. Fighter said, I got this. For what it's worth, I missed on the last attack. Well, of course you did. He fell over. I feel like the burst down was a good call. Report hit points, Cleric. I have 155 out of 155 hit points. 206 out of 206. 150 out of 150. 118 out of 118. I deeply apologize to anyone who watched the entire start of this video for that to be the entire combat. <laughs> That's what it's like the banish. I was sure it wasn't a bundle of sticks and toilet paper. The mummy is dead. The first encounter is done. Not a lot of difficulty in these big scary monster encounters, so onward and upward through the rest of the castle. One encounter down, five more to go before the long rest. Thank you for stopping by, and I hope you'll join us next week as the adventure continues. I'm Sarsen Zero, and I will see you next time.